This is Will J. Eister coming to you from the Road J. Rocks podcast here on the WHNPK Henpeck Podcast Network. Hey, everybody, it's Robin here and Jackie. And we are Road J. Rocks coming Woo-hoo. at you. Woo. Oh, yeah. So, what's been happening? What's happening? You call back in 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see. I thought... <laughs> what was that? Call me. I can't see the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Shit. I think she said call me. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Hey, you behind me. What does this say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. I remember when uh, they told me I needed the damn things. And I'm like, you, what? I'm like, I'm not old enough to ha- have bifocals. And she goes, um, can you read this? I'm like, no. <laughs> she goes, well, then you need them. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So when I went to my, my, my eye doctor, okay, now... I'm in the chair, and he's, like, babbling on, blah, 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 blah. He's talking to me about, you know, his 20 acres in Gainesville, about all the game he's got up there, the wild game. And, you know, he self-sustains. He goes in there, and he takes what he needs. He shoots, you know, whatever he's going to eat and fills his freezer. And mm-hmm. then they keep breeding, and everything's free-range, and everything, you know, repopulates. So he's talking to me about that, and he goes, look over there. What do you see? Okay, now he doesn't say, look at the chart. He says, look over there. Tell me what you see. <laughs> okay, now I'm just out of comfort zone. I'm like, uh, a refrigerator? And he's like, <laughs> he starts wobbling. And he goes, no, 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 look up. I'm like, well, the hell am I supposed to know? You said, look over there and tell <laughs> me what you see. I see a refrigerator. He didn't say, look at the chart. <laughs> So how well, you was really you? Glasses, don't you? <laughs> <Bitch>. <laughs> so how was your Labor Day? My Labor Day, you know, it, it was it it was a weird Labor Day. I'm used to either having the family over and having a barbecue or something, and you know, I just wasn't into it this year. You know, I have a lot going on. I have a lot of projects that I'm trying to get done, and. I just wasn't feeling it. My granddaughter was supposed to come over yesterday, but then she, she bailed on me, man. She bailed on me. Uh-oh. Went to her house. Yeah, I was not happy. You know, she <laughs> went to her cousins. You know, I get it. You know, you want to play with your cousins, swim with your cousin. And um, so it was boring. And I was like, you know, both my kids were working, and, you know, and my granddaughter didn't come over. And then I'm like, you know, so I just kind of, Puts around the house. I'm like, well, this sucks. I might as well go back to work. And then I spend too much money when I'm not working because, you know, I'm online doing that Christmas shopping. <laughs> and I'm like, son of a bitch, I need to get back to work so I stop spending money. Mm-mm-mm. Horrible. Horrible. So I was kind of lazy. I was just lazy, and I, I didn't really want to be lazy. I wanted to be productive. But you know what? I just wasn't feeling it. Wasn't feeling it. Well... I can honestly say we we had a nice weekend. We were um, we were supposed to go with some friends to a park here, and you know they had a little medical mishap, and they ended up not being able to go. So um, Will and I got in the truck and we turned up the music and just drove. Oh my God! We ended up at this beautiful state park. <clears throat> And I saw um, your pictures. Yeah. Oh, my God, it was gorgeous. Oh, man. And we sat there. He goes, you want to sit until the um, the sun goes down? I'm like, yeah. And the thing was is my can't, my uh, my phone, of course, shit the bed. This phone, I'm telling my... Well, anyway, during the most important part of... Well, I can't say that because we had such a wonderful day. I mean, we got to chill out and... You know, we just sat there, and he has been working so, so much that it was, it was really, I looked around, and he was asleep (laughs) in the chair. (laughs) So, it was really cool. We had a really good time. It was very nice, you know. And then, yesterday, we just laid around and watched movies and ate food. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong with that. You need that every once in a while, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And the kind of crazy hours that Will's been putting in. 
lately. You know, it's, um, yeah. you know, it, he needs it. I don't need it. I miss him, but, you know, he needs that time to, you know, unwind. And it just seemed like it, Will's a very, he's a nature person anyway. And uh, once you get out there, you just see him kind of absorb right into nature, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, so it was really cool. We met a really neat couple that sat beside us and uh, come to find out his brother was a musician and they were going to see his band. And it, we, you know, found all kinds of stuff to do yesterday, but we were just, I think we were just wore out and just wanted to, you know, sit and watch TV. That was all. You know? Yeah. Educate, yep. So. I wish I had more of those days, and then when I do have those days, I kind of feel guilty. It's like, oh, my God, I got to do something. I got to do something. And, you know, I mean, I kind of mowed my, my, my forest yesterday, um, you know, in patches, but, it, man, it got too damn hot to be out there and, and mow too long. You know, I was kind of getting fried up. But, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, and it, I guess today is one is probably going to be one of those. Well, it's not really a mellow road, Jay, but I, I'm a little pissed off over some of the shit that I've been reading about yeah, all why this. Don't you, um, why don't you tell our listeners about that? Because I'm a little annoyed about that, too, because, ugh, jeez. What happened to freedom of speech, anyway? I don't, I, I don't know. It seems like freedom, I don't get it. Everybody can impose and say that they want us to do this and do that. And you have to accept this and you have to accept that. And if I want to cut up on the, on the podcast, I can. I can do all that I want. But it doesn't mean that they have to, to put it out there. And, yeah, that stinks. you know, the thing is, is we don't make slurs towards anyone. But if we use a little foul language, that shouldn't be held against us. And we are adults. It says that this is an explicit podcast, so there will be things of sexual nature being brought up, like boobs. <laughs> well, listen, listen and, here's, here's the thing. Here's, here's, here's what I don't understand. Okay, I remember, and I remember this blatantly, and I, and this I couldn't have been too awful long ago because... You know, I mean, it, it, Howard Stern, and I remember being down here and listening to, to him. And he had, you know, I mean, he was talking about this woman he had on, on the air, on the air, on the radio. I'm not even talking about a podcast. On the radio. And she was a she was a, a porn star or something. And he was sitting there talking about you know, how many men she could do in the next hour, and I have all these guys lined up here, and how many do you think you can do in the hour? Now, how is that okay, but, you know, us saying boobs or, you know... Shit or damn or hell. Yeah. yeah. Any, I mean, come on now, on a podcast at, at, at that. You know, I mean, what do they want? You know, I mean, okay, so... <clears throat> Okay, you can do whatever you want in your podcast, but we're not going to play you on our, you know, thing because we don't like your language or we don't like what you talk about and you can't do it. Well, okay, so just put me in a square box and hand feed me what it is you want me to talk about. Well, that's mm -hmm. not me. That's not me, man. I can't do that. I can't do that. I ain't, I, I'm not about somebody else's agenda. Uh-uh. Yeah, but it seems like that's what's been going on. <clears throat> you know, and, and I hate to get all serious, folks, but you know what? The more we try to put out something, it seems like the more we get, oh, you know, that's a little bit much. How the hell is it a little bit much when you have people running half naked on TV and you're looking at them? Yep. So what the hell am I saying that's so derogatory that it's affecting your ears and your sight? Really? Yeah, and where do you live? Okay, where do you live that you're offended by that? I mean, come on. I, the stuff that's out there in the world today, I don't know. Okay, so I can have a, 
I, I can have a schlong come into my lady's dressing room, you know, because they dress like a woman. Okay. Man, and... I feel like a woman. <laughs> Sorry. You know, they can be in my bathroom. They can be in my dressing room. I don't like that, but that's shoved down my freaking throat, and I gotta accept that. No, I don't. I don't have to accept a pair of sweaty balls all up in my dressing room. Okay, but I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. I can't say balls on the radio <laughs> or podcast or what. Screw you. Come on now. <laughs> That was People a couple of shows ago, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. Sweaty balls. No, hot as balls. Hot, hot as balls. balls. Yes. Hot as balls. I don't know. I just seem like, um, I mean, we're we're rising up as far as plays and listeners and stuff. It's a slow rise. I think people are getting used to our um, type of humor. Because I think our crowd is a little... I think it's from our age down to the younger crowd. And I think yeah. one of the things is is the simple fact that people are like, hmm, the younger generation doesn't get us. Hey, everybody. Robin again and... <laughs> Jackie... <laughs> Roj Rocks here, take two. Um, part two, I should say. It was, uh, yeah. I think the government didn't like that take or something. So yeah, I, just, I think you know, yeah. Cut my signal out. Yeah, yeah. it's funny because Washington D.C. is um, when I went to look at the stats. Now they're not listening to me on Jackie Eister's <laughs> history. <laughs> In fact, that's Menlo Park, California, where our Facebook is. Out of uh, Menlo Park. Now, I said, oh, I get it. So, see, Facebook watches me on Jackie Eister Songistry. And they keep up with, they, you know, they go, do, 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 And let Washington know, ah, it's Ro J Rocks. You got to really keep an eye on those two because God only knows what they're going to say. Oh my god. Do you know how badly I want to go? Oh my god, there's aliens outside of my window. And then have Will do all kinds of weird sound effects. <laughs> and then at the end go, this has been. At, you know what I'm talking about? You remember what yep. they did on the whole. You know, let me put it this way. If we talked about old radio, um, what was that? Uh, what was the name of that radio program that freaked everybody out in the uh, the forties? That's the one that Orson Welles did, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> if you guys even knew that that really did freak out a bunch of people, <laughs> <laughs> they really thought the aliens had landed. <laughs> wow. War of the Worlds. That's it. War of the Worlds. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it was a full radio program. I wish I could get my hands on it, but, you know, the thing is, is um, I was looking for it on YouTube. The only version that they have, they have it broken up to where, um, but they've, they kept all the old commercials and all that stuff in it. But I would love to do some shit like that. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and I would in a minute. In a minute, if I knew we could get by with it. <laughs> I can see, awesome. wait a minute, because I've got one, one, two, two cousins in the Air Force. One, two, three Navy, couple of Marines, and then my ex-husband's Army. But, um, yeah, I can just see them now going, if they're listening, well, wait a minute. I wasn't told anything about this. There's, do you mean there's a UFO landing in India? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't send the men in black? What? At the same time that one is landing in Spring Hill, Florida. <laughs> uh, no. Uh I see him. I see you, car. You're going, oh, you must be Jerry. Hey. <laughs> that would be The horses are acting crazy. I don't know what's wrong with them. What's going on out there? 
The dog God. stood up and said, hell no, I ain't going outside. <laughs> Threw his That's tail up and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> but anyway, yeah, there, there's so much craziness going on that what? you know. It, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I always thought when I got to this age that things would be a little bit better. They'd be, you know, even though we have moved along in um, <clears throat> what we've learned and in technology and stuff. I just thought that things would be a lot better. I think actually the, the um, I, I, you know, as good as technology has been, I, I, I don't even know if I want to say good. I want to say as advanced as it had, had gone. I don't know about you, but I remember <clears throat> watching years ago a movie where, you know, they had um, somebody who had one of those, um, well, I'm, I'm going to call, call it the equivalent of an Apple watch now you know the watch thing that you could talk to people you know on your watch and you know stuff like that and as good as advanced as the technology has gotten i don't really know if it has been better for society because i mean i think that we've been so far removed from personal conversations everything is texting or facebook and, you know, when it comes to an actual face-to-face -face conversation, they're kind of almost non-existent, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, and it's kind of sad, you know? I mean, when, when my granddaughter comes over and, you know, I mean, I'll pick up the phone once in a while and I'll take pictures, but, you know, everybody goes, oh, you never answer your freaking phone. Well, when my granddaughter's there, I don't. I put the phone down because I want to have those moments with her and, and mm -hmm. have those conversations with her. I don't want her to think it's okay to ignore anything that I'm saying because your face is planted in a phone, you know? I mean, what are we teaching our kids if that's what we're doing, you know? I mean, have you ever been in a room? I was I was at my, um, this was years ago when, when you know, the, when the whole, I think maybe when Facebook first started out. And I remember being in a room full of my relatives and um, the younger ones, you know, my, my nephew, my nieces, and their, you know, spouses and stuff like that, they were all, and their friends, they were all in a room, <laughs> dug and covered, bitches! <laughs> oh, my God. Don't cover! Oh. <laughs> they were all in a room, mm -hmm. and they were all texting each other. I'm like, what the, f or Satan putting shit on bed, I'm like, what the f are you doing and they were like well, we're, we're updating i'm like you guys are in the same room together why are you not having a conversation with each other put the phones down <clears throat> you know because i mean i was up there and i'm not up there that often put the damn phones down it's ridiculous ridiculous you know but i don't know that it's gotten any better i think it's made it worse i mm -hmm. think it has made it worse modern oh. technology mm -hmm. well you know, it's funny because I see now the phones give people something to do, okay? So that other people can take longer to do their job. I figured that yeah. out, first of all. And I can't say that about my doctor's office because, you know, we go there and we're like 15 minutes and boom, we're in. Um, but I have watched other things and other places and that's when i've realized i'm like wow now i know why they 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 are giving us something to do with our hands and our mouths so that if we want to talk to our friends we can talk to them any time of the day wherever okay texts and messages do this do that whatever we want to do we can do right at this moment we could talk to people all the way around the other side of the world. Yep. And within seconds, we can send them pictures. We can do whatever. <clears throat> That's well, why I don't believe it's just the United States. No, it's, 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 it's not just the United States. I think this, this is... is the dumbing down of America. I know that. But well, yeah. Like worldwide. Right. But I think it's the dumbing down of many countries. 
Yes. Here, take this, and you know you can use it for an emergency. But if you're bored and you want something to do, here, do this. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, think about it. Back in our day, yes, they had, uh, we had to worry about um, somebody coming in the yard and stealing us or, you know, but that was very far and few between. And usually we traveled in packs of like 10 and 15, you know what I mean? Right, exactly. And we, we swung from the trees. We did this. We did that. You know, now when I hear a kid broke his leg because they fell over something, I'm like, really? You stupid klutz. Okay. Me, if I'm going to break something, it's going to be falling out of a tree. <laughs> right. Or slamming into something on my motorcycle or my bike. You know, because I grew up, when I grew up, I had three-wheelers, I had motorcycles. I had all kinds of crap growing up. Me and my sisters did. So, you know, I mean, we were always outside, even in the winter time. Oh, yeah. You know, my yeah. mom was like, gee, did get in this house. And I'm like, but mom, it's the first snow. We want to get in this <laughs> house before you get pneumonia. You know, and then we used to sit there and be window watchers. Like, man, look how deep it's getting. That would be so cool, Tanya, wouldn't it, if I picked you up and threw it in? <laughs> <laughs> threw you into the snowbank. Yay! You know? <laughs> so, you know, but it was fun. I mean, you used to be able to jump off the porch into a great big thing of snow. And I don't well, know. I don't know why people are so fat, okay? Okay, first of all. You know, back in the day, you only put cartoons on Saturday morning. Right. Only for a couple of hours. You know, so the kids got their cartoon fix for a couple of hours on Saturday morning. Or Bay Friday City Rollers. Flakes. Yeah, hello. Right? Dun, dun, and, um, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so while they ate their cereal, so mom and dad could sleep in, mm -hmm. you know, you went and turned the TV on and watched your couple of hours worth of cartoons, and that was it. That's all you got, okay? Then it was outside. You know, we were all outside having fun, okay? Cartoons are over. You know, got to get dressed, got to go, you know, get the friends and gather up the friends and see what everybody's doing today, and, mm -hmm. you know, and you played, okay? So the kids were, we were so much more active. <clears throat> We were always on our bikes. We were always running around, you know, constantly. <clears throat> now you got cartoons on 24-7. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the kids in, in, involved in their video games. You got parents scared to death of letting their kids out because... They really have to worry them. that. Scooter do to the mic. Uh, yeah, that's the best scooter do. Uh, Here. Lord, you just can't stop, can you? <clears throat> Hi, Esbester. Hi, Robin. How are you, Esbester Scooter Day? Hi, Mr. Scooter Day. Hi, Robin. How are you today? <laughs> Doing good. Good. You sound tired, girl. I'm tired today. I'm tired, man. Are you tired? Lord knows I'm tired. Lord knows I'm tired. Yeah, because, you know, as, as a matter of fact, I had to go beat my crackers today. What you saying? I can't say that. I'm sorry. We'll have to edit. Oh. <laughs> we'll have to edit that. Uh, no, uh, what Jackie was talking about was if you go to www vanderbilt.edu Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee uh, they now have a uh, uh, they have a gender poster that you might want to check out uh, and if you go to that school this is what you must follow well, yeah, if you go to that school what? or whatever. I, no, this this is this is true. This is you know, you go to Vanderbilt University's website, this is on their website. Um you are at you're being asked to uh when you address other students, you're asked to introduce yourself <laughs> and explain to them what pronouns that you go by 
and ask the individual what particular pronouns they go by. Uh, like you would say, hi, my name is, my name's DJ Will J. My pronouns that I go by are he, Mr. and they. <coughs> and they may introduce themselves as, hey, hi, how are you? Oh my God, my name is da da da. I go by pronouns like, oh my god, what is it I go by? It's like zer, zers, and zers. You know, um, the whole, in, the whole, the whole focus is is to uh, <coughs> make it a completely gender neutral uh, surroundings for students. I don't understand that I, whatsoever. It's not a matter of whether or not it's understanding. That is the way that it is. And that is coming to all companies too. Now listen here. No, listen it, here. Ja, it doesn't ma Robin, it's the way that it is. Yeah, I mean, we can bitch about it all that we want to. That is the way that it is. That is the way, that is the way we're going. Well, and you okay, can that's because, let me tell you something. That's because we are allowing that to happen. We need to stand up and say, we're not going to allow this shit to happen. I'm sorry, but when a baby is born, it is born either a boy or a girl. Whatever you identify with after you grow up is your business. And I don't have anything against the people that, you know, want to, you know, I don't have anything against gay people. Some of my closest friends are gay people. Okay? I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. What I have a problem with is changing everything that has been known to society going back to before Christ. You know, and now you're changing it because we have a bunch of crybaby titty freaks that are on, you know, sucking on their mommy's teats because they're not getting their way. And I'm sorry, but we cannot allow this to happen. You're born a boy or you're born a girl. That's just the way it is. There is no, oh, it has been born. You got something there. You either got a vagina or you got a penis. I was almost going to say the other word. But, um, and that's the way it is. That what identifies you as a boy or a girl period right right no if you like your vagina or your penis is your business but uh-uh no this is bs well no, all you got to do is go to vanderbilt.edu once again that's vanderbilt.edu not in any way associated with Ro J Rocks. In no way associated right. with Ro J Rocks. <laughs> no, it's oh, it's absolutely it's well, it, yeah, well. Uh, Actually, I, I got. No, I, I just can't even. I don't even know how to respond to that. Actually, you'll like this one. I got into a very very heated political discussion with. I'm sure. I don't know if you keep up with the NFL, but Mr. Kupernick. The gentleman who decides to sit down during the national anthem. Are you familiar with this one? He plays for the 49ers, which he plays from. It, it's that's San Francisco, so it should be the San Francisco 69ers. But you know what I mean. Um, he plays for the San Francisco 49ers, and he decides to sit down during the national anthem, which is fine. That is his right. He has the right to protest. That it's freedom of speech. But guess what? I also have the freedom of speech to call him out as a pussy. That's right. That's right. I did, and I got into a very heated discussion because it's like, well, you, well, you know, you know, well, that's why you served, and it's like, yes, that's why I served. And I put on his Facebook and say, okay, let's settle this. You like to sit down, okay? That's fine. How about we do this? How about we put you in a uniform, give you all the gear you need. And put you in the middle of a territory where ISIS does patrols. Let's see your bitch ass sit down then. <laughs> but no, that's fine. And, and see, this is this is what people forget. Okay, people are like, "Well, you can't, you can't do this. You can't look. You want, you want the freedom, okay, to express yourself. Well, then you better be ready for people that want to express themselves on the opposite side of it. You want to well, put that's exactly right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I explained to this lady. It's like, 
I'm not denying the man. The, yes, I serve my country so he can have the freedom to sit down on the bench and, and, and protest in silence. But I also serve my country, and that gives me the right to call him a bitch. As it gives him. Jesus, it, it, Jackie, go blow that schnoz in the bathroom, man. Jackie, you need to go snub, blow your schnoz in the bathroom. <laughs> Dude, I hear this every day on the way to work. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I hear this every day. I, on... I totally agree with that because, listen, I was offended by that and everybody's going, well, he's got the right. Okay, Excuse yeah, that's, me, that's, that's what I was saying to what's his ass. Yeah, or whatever his name is. Uh, yeah, what's he his... might have the right, but you know, I, I'm offended by that because, you know, you know, my relatives and people that I know that are here today, tomorrow, or past have, you know, fought for him to have that freedom. So it's disrespectful to them. Absolutely. Not necessarily the country, but to them. Well, and that's Pansy what... ass bitch. Damn, pansy ass bitch, she called him. Woo! <laughs> hey, hey, uh, okay, so check this out. Are you, you remember, do you remember Bob Ross, the painter? Happy yes. trees, happy. Yes. Okay, have you ever seen a picture of, of Copperneck? Have you ever looked at him? Excuse uh, me. Oh my God, you just got to Google that and look at him and tell me if he does not look like Bob Ross. The, oh my God. Oh my God. Happy trees. Happy trees, happy trees, and you know the Could sad, it? and the sad, be? <laughs> what, no, and the sad part about it is, so I, so I checked it out, right? So, they look so much alike, but here's the, here's the catcher though, <coughs> Kaepernick sits on his ass like a little bitch. Bob Ross was a master sergeant in the United States Air Force, and he, yep. pa- and he paints happy trees. There you have That's it. why he paints happy trees so he didn't whoop somebody's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I either paint happy trees or rip your head off. So we'll go with happy trees. <laughs> happy tree. It's a happy tree. <laughs> I'm gonna over here there's no mistakes. We're painting happy trees for you. Pussies! Oh hello, okay, there you go. You know, and it's just, oh my god, it's so sad. I'm sitting here, I'm... Like, I, oh my god, can I have my headset back? Oh my god, yes you can. <laughs> um, I am actually uh, looking, I'm actually at... Tra- uh, Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt University. Vanderbilt University, I'm looking up their... Uh, and we are not saying anything wrong about Vanderbilt University. We are just stressing what you have on your page. Here at the, <laughs> oh my god, they actually have... Office of Diversity Affairs. <clears throat> Discipline equals area, ethnic, cultural, and gender studies. Ooh, this is getting even better. Yeah, that's going to wow. drive your insurance up. Wow, look at this. Resources supporting supporting gender diversity across... Wow. Wow. And, and this right this this is not just <laughs> Vanderbilt. This is across this the is whole edu- this is across the whole educational spectrum. I mean, it it's it's reaching into our, from its its colleges, its high schools. They're now going into secondary grades, school secondary grade. grade. I mean, come yeah. on, man. You know, I well, the sad part about but, well, it. Well, it's not just that. It's also major companies, especially healthcare, like insurance. Oh yeah, I've actually there was also uh, mm-hmm. an article talking about uh, uh, some universities allowing student insurance to pay for transgender uh, Surgery. surgeries. What? Absolutely. See, she didn't read my Facebook page. I am so upset. But but let me th- see. This is me. It's like if you are a dude and you want to blow a dude, good for you. <sighs> if you're a chick and you want to be with a chick. Good for you. If you're a dude, that's du- what I if feel you're, like. If you're a dude that wants to be with a be woman, careful. oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if you're a if you're a woman that wants to be with a man, humana, 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 humana. But that's who cares? I don't. Who cares? Get it out of my face. Who cares? Who right. gives a rosy red rat's ass? The sad part about all of this, the very sad part about all this, and I'm going to harp on it, and people can think I'm harping on it, 
don't care because guess what? We're talking about freedoms. If he can sit down on the bench, I can bitch. <clears throat> the sad part, Absolutely. the the very sad part about it is, is that it, it's the people that deserve. I, no, I don't even want to use the word deserve. Everybody deserves good health care. But the sad part about it is, is that we put so much focus on. Um, okay, I'll give you an example. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Okay. People going through transgender reassignment surgery have to live X amount of years as whatever sex that they're going through. They have to but go how the hell do they know that if they're not officially that sex yet? Right. The, it doesn't matter whether part, you live that from, way. From what I have read, this is part of what they have to go through. To assume this as if, if it's a uh, man um, <clears throat> transitioning to a woman. I know. I, they I, can't I, I finish, please? Yeah. Thank you very much. Zippy, zippy, zippy. Zippy, zippy, zippy. Okay. There is a whole... You're just itching it. There's a whole there's a whole process. They have to they have to live as that gender. They go through hormones, they go through therapy to get their mind <clears> right <throat> and this and that. How come it's so much easy why is it so much easier for a man wanting to go to a woman to get the psychological help that he needs? It's easier for him to get the psychological help that he needs to go from a man to a woman than it is a veteran who has seen the atrocities of what the human race at their worst to get that out of his head. He'll never get yep. that out of his head. Man. Why yep. is it? I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> and you know what? And I, I actually have uh, a friend who, you know, he who needs major back surgery. And, you know, he's on Medicare. And, you know, he, he needs it because, like, he's got rheumatoid arthritis. And there's, you know, surgery that they can do to help him. And he's been to three centers. And his Medicare will not cover it. He has to come out of pocket $20,000. $20,000. Who the bleep has twenty thousand dollars to pull out of their ass to get something that they need that could help them live pain free and get him off the damn drugs that he's on? But now the insurance wants to, you know, they 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 want to fight for the insurance company to pay for transgender, you know, surgeries. And you know what? They will win. They will win that fight. They will win it. Oh, absolutely. They will win it. And here in, in here, I'll, I'll give you a better example. And this this right here, this should piss off every patriotic American listening to this, that there is a gentleman that is sta there. Well, I say gentleman, but they're in Leavenworth, Kansas, Leavenworth, Fort Leavenworth, the military prison in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. And according to a congressional ruling, according to a congressional court, the United States military has got to pay for their counseling, their hormone therapy, because they're transitioning from a male to a female and they're in military custody. Welcome to the United States of the Offended. And by the way, yep. I have to I have to give credit where that credit is due. That were that phrase, God love Rosh Limbaugh, and you know, by the way, if you, do you know who G. Gordon Liddy is? What love? Oh my God, you should you should check out G. Gordon Liddy. Check out G. Gordon Liddy, Rush Limbaugh, and for those of you who don't know, I highly recommend a book called Rogue Warrior by Richard Marchenko. Just so you know who Richard Marchenko was, Richard Marchenko was such a badass in Vietnam. He was commander of SEAL Team 6. The Viet Cong had a price on his head of $50,000 because he was so badass. So just some words of wisdom, and I'll give you back to Jay. By the way, this is HMPK. Henpeck podcast on the Fine Feathered <laughs> Friends Network. <laughs> mind you. Mind you. She's talking still. I Here, hold use... on. Here. I'm sorry, Robin. Go I'm I'm sorry, Robin. Go ahead. No. But God, oh my shit, God, man. You're so special. <laughs> I, I, I'm that dog. But oh, hey, the insurance company don't pay for that special ed stuff. Oh, no, in, in com no, insurance company will not pay for that. But hey, I've got, I've got a couple of song lyrics I need to run by you. <laughs> okay, I put your aw in rickshaw. Oh my god. I saw you in needing. I made your eye rolls like a shark in feeding. 
Uh, oh my god. I put my pee pee. Yeah, I'll have my, pe- my people call your people. Okay, uh, say wait, goodbye. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> this, this is all in relation to, like, you know, because Jackie's, like, you know, Chinese, Indonesian, <laughs> you know, fish, alien, <coughs> you know. Oh, and my fish? Part, I'm fish. Okay. You're a guppy. I put my pee pee in your teepee. Oh my god. <laughs> all right, can, special I, can, I do the, uh, can I do the other one? Which one? Well, that's not going oh, on that oh, wait, special wait. station. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I gotta, well, is, is this explicit or not? Can, yes, it's explicit. Okay, wait, my personal favorite. The blues. Wait, 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 wait. My personal favorite, the blues version. Ah, put my wiener in your vagina. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, give me the second. Okay. This just. Jackie said give it to her, so I'm out. <laughs> okay, and that's it for Mr. Special Four Sets. <laughs> you know, I'm seriously thinking maybe we should change it to Will Road all right, listen to this. Road J Will Rocks. What do maybe. you think? Maybe. I think we need to change it and add Dr. Hoosie over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dr. Hoosie does it over here. <laughs> so listen, back to what he's saying, though. Honestly, I mean, really, you, you know, this is it. Our generation is it. We are the last of anything patriotic that this country stood for. We're in it. What, Robin, we're anything. We're all we're left. We're a little bit of common sense. We didn't burn up with dope, okay? <laughs> In the 80s yep. is gone. Yep. I'm sorry. You know, I know that I, you remember, I had to carry a buttload of books home. I don't know about you. I know, okay, I wasn't, I never really, there was a couple of the books that I never really even looked at, but (laughs) I brought them home, okay? And the thing is, is my mom and dad got me a backpack. I remember probably, I want to say about 10 years ago. When um, everybody was complaining, oh, I got to take my kid to the chiropractor. The book bags are too heavy. And then I said, you know, something made me realize something. We used to use the same books for how many years? Yep. yep. Okay. I remember um, my English book, and I and I could be mistaken, but I believe I was in the seventh grade. And I looked, and it in the the last per, the very first person that had opened that book was in 1977. Yep. Okay. And it made me realize, okay, even if we kept the books for five, six years, okay, that's still information that these kids now. You know, it's sad because William and I were at the la, uh, laundromat. And we were talking to these uh, two young girls that were there. And they weren't really young. They were in their, like, mid-20s. And, um... <laughs> Will said something about... He goes, yeah, well, you know, the Reagan years, those are a day of um, something. He made this remark, and they turned around and looked at him, and they're like, Reagan? And he goes, President Reagan. And they're like, well, oh, we don't... And I said, I said, how old are you? Well, I'm 25. How the hell do you not know about President Reagan? I mean, yep. there are the Robin. I'm, I'm just like flabbergasted. Okay, now we're, you know, as a matter of fact, I was looking at, um, <clears throat> I'm, you know, putting in for different types of jobs and stuff that I want to do now at my age that I have experienced in and, <clears throat> and I want to try, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was going, it took me literally two hours to finish one application <laughs> for this job. And I had already loaded my resume. 
The only thing I didn't add was how many times a day I go to the bathroom. And if I choose to use one ply or two ply toilet paper, okay? I mean, to me, (laughs) I was floored. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. But it just seems like, and yes, folks, this is one of our more serious ones right now. And I'm sorry. <clears throat> yes, I can goof off and carry on. I'll think of something funny next week to talk about. <laughs> yeah, well, this needs to be said. This needs to be said. Because, yeah, because... You know, we are. We're the last generation of any type of patriotism. You know, you don't even see that much anymore. People are just so worn out. They're so worn out by the crap that's shoved down their throat. But you know what? What do you expect? And I don't care. Let Washington be leaping in. What's going on over there? Okay? Too bad. We still have freedom of speech right now. And I don't care. When you have a president who is apologizing, apologizing Mm -hmm. to people that we went to war with years ago. Dude, there was a reason we went to war with them. Stop freaking apologizing for shit that happened years ago that was necessary years ago. Stop it. Stop apologizing for this shit. Okay? Because, you know, whoever was in, in power back then thought that that was the thing we needed to do then. Okay? Stop being a little whiny bitch and apologizing for everything because we're not sorry. Yeah, but he, wait a minute, stop right there. What is he sorry for? This is what I don't understand. He's apologizing for stuff, but yet he's not sorry for what he's doing now. Exactly. No, he's not sorry. Damn right he's not sorry. He's He's doing exactly what he's meant to do, which is destroy this country, you know, I can't even believe what people are getting upset over when they should be taking a look at what is going on and what our government is doing to us. Okay? And let me tell you something. All these little bleeding hearts out there, all these little bleeding hearts, when you all get your turnip rations every month, you can say, shit, I should have listened to Road J Rocks because they had it right. You're going to get your stupid turnip rations, buddy. And you're going to get your government cheese, too. Okay? See how that's working for you. Yeah, but do you feel like, you know, this is the thing that um, kind of blew my mind. I was watching something on my phone about, and well, actually, it was kind of like a commercial, like an infomercial. <clears throat> and it was talking about the 30s. And it was showing the bread lines and all this stuff. People going to, um, I'm sorry, but I would rather work for my money than to have to know that there is not a job for me. Right. And I have to literally go somewhere and pick up my box of food that's going to feed my family for a month. Yep. And I'm going to have to ration out everything. Yeah, I mean, and that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. I, I don't care what anybody says. That's what they're, they're, yeah. they're spraying in the sky. Everybody yep. goes, oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. Yep. They're spraying shit in the sky. They're spraying in the sky. They're killing our shit, killing our bees, killing our food source, killing our animals, killing us. Okay? Yep. Okay? And you know what? And, and they're doing it all by design. You control the food source. You control, control the, the people. people. Yep. And yes. You know, I think out there going, oh my God, there she goes. She's going crazy again. Yep. But yep. You know no, you're right. You you're right. You heard it here, buddies. You heard it here, ass hot. When mm-hmm. you get your freaking turn up every month and go, oh my God, shit, Robin, the crazy chick was right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. The you thing. Know, I'm, the... Not, I'm not about conspiracy theories or anything like that. I don't go freaking out over every little thing, but I'm sorry. I'm watching it happen. I know it's happening. <coughs> and if I didn't think it was true, I wouldn't be jumping on the bandwagon. Yep. You got this, what? what is going on in Ohio? You got that clown? I mean, that's something right out of freaking a Steven Spielberg movie, for God's sakes. You know? Oh, they're the going to catch his ass. I guarantee you. And that's, um, babe, that place where that clown is in Ohio is not very far from here, is it? No, he's not very far from here. I know he had to bring his ass. Hi, my name is Jackie Eister. We really do. We would love for you to come and entertain us on Audubon. <laughs> yeah, Indianapolis, Indiana. 
<laughs> William and I would both love very much for you to come and entertain us. Yes. Bring your okay. little happy clan, clown ass and bring your little buddy if you got one of those. I really do think you should come and see us. <laughs> we really would like to be entertained. Because I know we could use you for entertainment right here. <laughs> I have a, yeah, a special little something, something for you. Yeah, yes. you know what would be really oh, cool? Don't play that, bitch. That's right. You yeah. know what? This is the thing. Whatever ha What do you call those things that you hang up that you hit with a stick? Pinata. That's it. A walking pinata. Love it. I will Love pour it. some candy down in your uh, <laughs> little costume there, and we will. Beat the piss right out of you until we can get that candy out of there. <laughs> and you better not pee on my candy. Bitch, that's so right. Get twenty more. That's oh. right. Yeah, and it, oh and you know that's another thing I don't understand. And you know I know I shouldn't be talking about this, but whatever happened to that? Are you kidding me? Is there that many people in this world? And this is what it. And if you don't believe me, look at Lifetime. Look at the older movies that go all the way back to the um, when Lifetime very first started in the 80s, okay? And yep. <clears throat> they were talking about true-to-life stories of uh, women being attacked and raped and all this and, and these guys getting off. And then, you know, all this shit happening and them getting off on stuff. How does that even happen in this country? I don't know. And you know that there's, you know, this country, you know, is a, a big, you know, there's a lot of the sex trafficking and all that stuff with young teenage girls and stuff. Yeah, but how the hell was it? This is what I'm not, again. I don't, I don't get it either. I don't either. How can you, how can you be in the middle of a desert and hone in on somebody with your drones, you know, and know that somebody is in a little underground hut, but you, you don't know that this shit's going on in your own backyard. They right. Know. They know. They yes. Know. And see, that's another thing. You know, I heard that a drone, some of these drones can catch uh, a flea farting from, you know, less than two inches away. So how the hell is it that all this shit, they've got all these people with all these drones and I all, well, now we've got drone laws because, you know, this person, why? Because they flew in and caught people making meth and now you're going to have to go in there and do something about it. Right. You know, exactly. why do we have the drug? Why do we have all the problems that we're having? First of all, why are you putting these lives, these these officers and stuff like that? Throw a drone up in the air. Let them go over there. They shoot the damn drone. You shoot them. Period. Yep, Done. That's it. Done deal. Done deal. Yep. I agree. <clears throat> I mean, RoboCop. Didn't they have that robot thing that used to go in? Yep. <laughs> well, well, he used to be human before they made him, you know, the robot, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm talking about the, uh, you know, that other thing. that the, It's almost like the one, that thing that goes in to, to um, deactivate the bombs. They well, need yeah, one yeah. of those that rolls up to the door and holds the door closed. Now, and a little face deep comes up. And says, I'm officer 5524. I need to see your license. And then them put the license and everything up so that the officer in the car can see. I know. People are saying, but it's almost like we're going into this robotic crap that we're going to have to worry about. Because first of all, I'm tired of them shooting at our officers and firemen. Yep. And these are people that go out and put their lives on the line every single day, just like the vets and the soldiers do. I agree. You yep. know what I mean? And to me, <laughs> I'm like, really? I mean, it, it, how is it? You know, I was actually, and I, I went so far as to look up stuff. How come they don't back in the eighties, if a cop shot somebody that pulled a gun on them. Okay. Everybody said, nice work. You know what? You got them off the street. They're exactly. no longer going to be able to do that. Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, if they were killed in the process, oh, well, you know, he was doing this and doing that. Well, he shouldn't have been doing it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> the That's cop right. was doing his job. That was his job. 
The thing was is now if they do that, they're put on some type. They're taken off with pay. They're doing yep, this. We have to investigate so we can that. Investigate, yeah. Okay. Investigate my ass. Nothing. Well, I'm not saying that there aren't cops out there that do bad things. There are. But there's not as many as everybody says there are. You know what I'm saying? No. And, and you know, and it's like, I, I can't even, okay, first of all, I'm sorry, but if you have a rap sheet as long as my right arm, okay, then, you know, listen, man, you are in trouble. Of course, if I'm an officer and I see that this person's got a rap sheet and I know that he could be packing heat, I don't care if he is or not. He could be. And I'm an officer approaching him. I'm going to proceed with really <clears throat> extreme caution. Exactly. And the firearm is going to be drawn. And if he makes a move towards his pocket, he's getting his balls blown off. Okay? And that's the bottom line. You know, I mean, so what if he, he wasn't armed at the time? He's got a rap sheet. How is anybody... Okay, you know, okay, what about a sex offender? Okay, a sex offender... Oh, that's easy. A sex Bang. offender for life. <laughs> uh, for life is a sex offender for life. Okay? So you're never going to look at that person the same way again other than they're a sex offender. Mm-hmm. Ever. You're never going to trust your kids around them. You're never going to trust your grandkids around them. You're never going to trust anybody that you love around them. They're a sex offender for life. Well, same with a, with a thug, a common thug. Criminal. I mean, yeah, could, can they be rehabilitated? Sure they can. But on this particular day that the officer pulled his gun on him, he wasn't rehabilitated that day. So you know what? It is what it is. Teach your kids not to be lying, thieving pricks that want to go around robbing people's stores, people's houses, shooting up people, doing drugs. Teach kids not to do that shit, then we'll talk. But Robin, Will and I were reading something. This was very interesting. It's probably back about a month and a half, maybe two months ago, babe. We were reading in there where um, this couple was robbed. <laughs> they came home. They had kicked in the back door, taken all this stuff. Now, this woman had just right gone shopping for her children to buy them clothes, to buy them um, their school supplies and everything. <laughs> These kids broke in, took everything, and left. And... These women actually stood there and said, Well, how did you think that they were going to get their school supplies? This is what <laughs> she, they told the news. Was it the newspaper? Uh, or was they it? Were, they were interviewing one of the girls, and they said he was a great class A student. He mm -hmm. got good grades. But he broke into the woman's house. The woman went home, shot him. Yeah. And the girl said, Well, how else was he supposed to get his school clothes? Yeah. Yeah, okay, bitch. Okay, l listen. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, but no, 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 Robin. Oh this is a real story that happened here. Okay, but that's what... You can't fix it. Stupid. Dumbass. Okay, you cannot fix stupid. <clears throat> and that right there is... is stupid. Stupid. Mm -hmm. Breeding more stupid. Breeding more stupid. Yep. Okay? Stop the breeding, people. It's like tigers freaking eat their young, man. Shit. They okay. The dumb ones. Okay. We can do all kinds of stuff now. We can do all kinds of stuff with the, the changing genders and all that. Why can't you plug it up? Yep. Why can't we put a plug in there at, you know, okay, you know your, uh, you know your kids become sexually active. Well, guess what? Make them go for um, a vaginal exam then at age 12. I know this is not, but the kids are having sex younger and younger. So why not have them checked? If the hymen's intact, they haven't had sex. If that hymen's broken, plug that bad boy up. Yep. But then again, it's not just, it's not fair for the girls. But, you know, the thing is, is I guess it would regulate their periods better. I mean, this is shit that we shouldn't have to do. But... It's getting younger and younger. It's like we're going back to the times of the Wild West when, you know, uh, little Amy Lee 
um, came out on the uh, little house on the prairie at 14 years old, pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it, the thing of it is, is that if you're going to be getting a government assistance, you're going to be getting a check, you're getting free food, you're getting all that stuff. Okay, then, <clears throat> you know what? You have You have one more child, you get cut off, period. You get cut off. Off. Any more kids, you're cut off. No, you what no you do assistance. is, oh no, no, no. The thing is, is she has to have a name for that father. Yeah. The thing is, is okay. The state takes care of these right here. Guess what? That baby number twenty-two, there, or number nine, or whatever. However many you're allowed to have, five, six, whatever. At that point, that father has to pay for the food. For everything. Yep. Something, because something's got to give. And what do you mean, how else are they supposed to get their supplies? <clears throat> That's you know what, what, This is something. what she said. Okay, she said, but he was a, a straight-A student. He did really good in school. How was he supposed to get his school supplies and his clothes? He broke you know into what? a woman's house, stole her shit, and she came home and shot him. How else was he supposed to get... Okay, first of all, you're supposed to be an adult here, and you're supposed to get them the supplies, number one. Number two, if you couldn't afford them, you go to somebody, you go to the school, and I'm sure, you know, like, like, okay, I know that when my kids were going to school, I had to buy extras, couldn't put nobody's name on it, you know, had to buy extra stuff, because there was kids that couldn't afford to buy... You know, mm -hmm. their parents couldn't afford to buy. So all those supplies went into a pile and, you know, they were divvied out to everybody, mm -hmm. you know. So what do you mean? I, I mean, so that kid can't, can't afford the supplies. Well, parents are being asked, okay, we need three boxes of tissues. We need two boxes of number two pencils. And that gets put into the classroom's closet full of supplies which is a, another ridiculous thing because my tax dollars go into the school system okay why do i have to keep putting money into it why back when we were growing up we didn't p take that shit okay we didn't take that we didn't buy our own pencils the school supplied <coughs> our own pencils the school supplied us paper they supplied all of those things i don't remember well i remember when uh now when i hit sixth grade i think fifth fifth and sixth grade fifth grade was the first year we had to buy stuff for me and then um nicole and tanya didn't have to have it yet but i did and um then from there out of course but it you know the thing is is we what, do they even use all that shit well they use it for the entire class but see, so, this is what I'm saying. The parents are already paying for it. Shit. Mm -hmm. Really? Right. Oh, 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 here's a classic. Okay, this is when my kid was, you know, my kids were obviously in high school. They're out of school now. But when my oldest daughter, <laughs> she was like, oh, my God. You know, because, you know, I'm, I'm, that, I'm that parent, you know. So, you know, we're standing in line and we're like, you know, you know, you got to pay for it. Even though you bought the damn you bought the, the locker lock. You bought the lock for the locker. Uh-huh. You had to you had to pay. You still had to pay to rent the locker. What? You had to rent the locker. Yeah. What so, the hell is that? Yeah, so you pay you rent the locker, you pay for the lock, and then I remember them telling me, Okay, and then there's this fee here. I'm like, Whoa, 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 whoa. What fee is that? That's an administration fee. I'm like, this is a public school. What the hell do you mean administration fee? And I said, how much is that? And she goes, $12. I said, $12. What's it for? And she was like, uh, what's an administration fee? I'm like, for what? The public school. I want to know what it's for. I want to know what I'm paying $12 for. You know? And I'm like, so you get $12 from every single parent in here. What does that pay for the principal's lunch all year long? I don't... What is that? I want to know what it is. And she's like, well, uh, ma'am, I don't know what it is, but you have to pay. I ain't paying shit. I'm not paying $12 if you can't even tell me what it's for. 
I'm not doing it. I don't care if it's twelve dollars. Did I have twelve dollars? Yeah, twelve dollars. But I'm not okay. It's like going to you, you go to you know Walmart or or wherever else you go, and and you know you go to pay for your crap, and the person says, oh, okay, well there's an extra twelve dollars on here for administration fees. <laughs> <laughs> You want to know what it's for, right? You want to know what the hell that twelve dollars is for? And I kept drilling her, tell me what it's for, and I'll pay it. Well, she can't start school unless you pay that twelve dollars. Well, I'm not. Then she's not going to school until you can tell me what the twelve dollars is for. Get the freaking principal over here right now, because I want to know what the twelve dollars is for. That nobody could answer my question. I said I'm not paying it. I'm not paying it. And then when the officer comes and knocks on my door because my kid's not in school. I'm going to send them to you because you're going to tell the officer what the $12 is for. How's that working for you? <laughs> she goes, ma'am, just calm down. Don't make her pay the $12. Forget it. <laughs> they didn't, nobody could tell me what the $12 was for. Wow. How are you going to charge every parent if you had 600 students in that school and each parent paid $12? Wow. What for? And then I still got to rent the locker. I still got to pay for the art lab. I still have to pay for the chemistry lab. I mean, what? Wait a I minute. Have... What do you mean you're paying for that shit? Okay, Jackie, I'm not kidding you. When I would, when the kids were going oh to school, my high school, God. I was paying $100 per kid to register them to start school every year. $100. What? Yes. By the time all the fees were said and done. Plus, I had to buy school supplies, which amounted to about sixty, seventy-five dollars per kid to a public school system. Wow. Yeah, plus, their clothes. You know, so it's like, shit. Are you kidding me right now? But this is what the blind. Okay, nobody questions it. Okay, twelve-dollar administration fee. Sure, I'll pay it. But no, don't pay it. Don't walk in there blindly and just pay it. What is it for? <laughs> Question it. Well, see, that's my whole thing. Nobody questions anything. I right. want to know why. Okay, when and Will's like, Jackie, just forget it. I'm like, no. I want to know. I was the why kid. Why? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Again, I wanted to know. Does God have a belly button? <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that I wanted to know why. <laughs> okay? Absolutely. So when I go somewhere and somebody says, well, it's 2277 and I'm like, what? Why? And they're like, well, you know, this is all you have and then, you know, taxes and this and that. So I'm like, oh, Okay. But if they can't tell me that, by damned, I will hold everybody up. Exactly. Everybody. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You've got to question everything. you got to question it. Just don't go, okay, okay, okay. Because eventually when you're standing in your turnip and your government cheese line, and you're saying, <laughs> okay, okay, well, there you have it. Here's it's that piece of cheese. Shit. To go on top of that turnip you got there. <laughs> Do you remember that gum and cheese? Oh, my God. No, I don't. Dana, you Robin, don't? I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, I never, I'm going to tell you, my dad made very good money growing up. I never had it anything like that. The first time I tried government cheese was at my girlfriend's house. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. So I came home and I was telling my mom about it. My my mom looks at me and she goes, um, I'm like, Mom, how come we can't go get that stuff? It makes really good grilled cheese, right? And uh, Mom goes, um, Jacqueline, you, did you look around? I mean, we had a beautiful home. We had cars. We had, and I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't answer. Why can't I get government cheese? That stuff's good. She said, Jacqueline, that's for people that can't afford to pay for things, you know. Your dad makes very good money. And, you know, I didn't even really realize it. <clears throat> My yeah. mom spent like $150 every two weeks at the grocery store. I mean, my yeah, my dad made very good money. I never, you know, we, 
there was a place that was called Zwix Concept 2 in Heron, Illinois. I used to go clothes shopping there. You know what I mean? My my mom used to get designer clothes, you know, had jewelry, all kinds. Of, we were very pampered and spoiled by my dad. You know? And I didn't have it. I didn't, you know. So, you know, when it got to a, t a point in a time, you know, I'm ready to, like, lose my shit. Because I'm like, you know, back then, you know, I, you were, I don't know, we just, we never wanted for anything, you, you know? Never, exactly, exactly. You always had, you always had, yep. But we always had a roof over our head. I mean, but I will tell you this, and Takis Rakes, I know you're listening to our program, so... <laughs> I used to tell Dad, I was like, you know, Dad, I've been, uh, I've been Jackie Rella here, you know. Um, I wash the dishes, I wash the car, watch the twins and Denise. I made dinner, I folded laundry, I did this, I vacuumed, I dusted, I, you know, cooked dinner. I did all that shit. Now, you know, and my dad's like, God, you know, I remember growing. I was like, oh God, here we go. You know, <laughs> when I was growing up. I was happy to do that. <laughs> and I was like, you were have my, yeah, right. And he goes, no, no, really, because we had a roof over our head. And I was like, dad, you have to put a roof over our heads. He goes, legally, yeah, 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 you know. And they say that, you know, I can't kill you and replace you with another one either. But, you know, it's been done. <laughs> And I was like, gee, thanks, Dad. And he's like, he was like, but Jacqueline, you know, you do you have nice clothes? I was like, yeah. Do you have records? Yeah. Do you have all that makeup and shit you put in your hair? Yeah. You got like 10 curling irons? Yeah. You got how many blow dryers? I don't know, two, three of those. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you have, a clothes, you have a closet full of clothes that most girls would die to have. Shoes, anything, your underwear, all that shit you put on your body there. He said, I paid a lot of money for that stuff. And I said, yeah. And he goes, well, what do I get in return? I said, you get me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your kid. Da, da, da. <laughs> and he goes, no, he said, did you ever stop to think how much it costs to keep your mother and you and the twins up? Denise is still little yet. She hasn't even grown into the, Dad, I need the Jordache jeans. He says, no, 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 no. And he goes, you know, most men don't realize I live in a house full of women. The only other male here is the dog. <laughs> He said, we buy mass amounts of them pad things for, you know, when, because you guys go like one every other day or something. And, you know, toilet paper, we can never keep it in the house. <laughs> and he's, he was right, though. Yeah, and he told me, he goes, I don't have any sons, anything to share anything with other than you women. <laughs> he said, I pay out big bucks every month, all women. And I said, well, you know, Dad, we're waiting for your other children to arrive here from Italy and all the other ports that you stopped in when you were in the Navy. <laughs> oh, 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 poor guy. oh, yeah, I was oh. waiting for the Italian brother to get here from Italy, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, Mom, Mom used to, we used to laugh and it was a joke. My mom used to say, yeah, sometimes I get nervous opening the front door because we're waiting to go here. Hi, do you know a Takis Rikes? I'm his son. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, my God. <laughs> no, but seriously, growing up, I used to tell him because I would say, Dad, you know, can I have $20? And he's going, have have do you know what have actually means and i'm like oh dear god you know what can i just have a five <laughs> because he would look at me because 20 was just an hour's worth of he used to walk in the snow uphill both ways oh, yeah, barefoot yeah, yeah, yeah. okay now listen there's no snow in indonesia <laughs> okay so once we got past that it was 
Did you know that I had to run from tigers in Indonesia both ways <laughs> to get to school? <laughs> to keep from getting eaten, okay? <laughs> I had to hop on a couple of hippos' backs to get across that and You got it easy, kid. You go get on a bus. I had to run through the jungle. And I had to oh, hope I would get to school before a tiger got me. And I, you have to understand, I was young, and I'm like, wow. And I'd go to school, you know, and, and, you know, the kids were like, she's weird. There's something wrong with her. She says her dad ran from tigers. And people used to say, she lies. No, I didn't. My dad used to tell you, know, I was telling some of the girls, I'm like, did your dad run from tigers? And they're like, no. My daddy's oh, from southern like... Illinois. And my daddy <laughs> never ran from a tiger. And I'm like, huh. Well, my daddy said that he used to have to run all the way to school through the jungle. And he used to have... And, and they're looking at me like, oh, my God. And not realizing, because we were, you know, we were young... Once I got old enough, I'm like, oh, my God, really? <laughs> and then Dad used to tell me, he was like, <clears throat> you know, I never pulled that shit growing up. I didn't get in trouble like that. You know, you better get that shit right out of your system right now, young lady. And I was like, so, you know, you get, I get to spend. Oh, my Opa started, you know, coming and hanging out with us. And, you know, I was a teenager and stuff, and... Me and Opa and some of my friends sitting out on the front porch. This is Evansburg, Pennsylvania, when we lived there. And um, I looked over, and I'm like, you know, Opa, how did Dad, how come he was so good all the time? <laughs> Opa turned around real slow, and he says, he's got his cigarette in his hand, and he's going, jockey? Are we talking about jockey? And I said, yes. And he says, Oh, no, your dad, he terrible growing up. Oh, he terrible. I tell him, you go in the Navy before you go to prison. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, that's how it was. Okay. So we waited for dinner that night. And I'm sitting there and I just could just about hold it in. <laughs> And my dad's like, well, I said, I'm going out tonight. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. I said, oh, but I am. And he goes, oh, really? And you think so? And I said, yeah, because Opa told me you weren't good like that. And he goes, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I said, um, did you little thing about having to go to the Navy before you went to <laughs> And he goes, uh, no, uh, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> you know, uh, he, he didn't tell you the whole story. And I'm like, oh, there's an entire story behind that. Well, you know what? <laughs> Rhonda will be here soon. So, you know, <laughs> actually, Marsha will be here before her. So I'm going out with Marsha tonight. Well, yeah, you'd be home by midnight and, uh, no drinking and no dope. <laughs> Standpoint that you don't want the grandma yapping. My mom did that one time. My kids were little, and I'm like, "Yo, cut the shit, mom, because you can't say that to young kids." You know. So you what did you? Okay, mom. all right. What did you ever learn from one of your grandparents about your mom and dad? Uh, my dad. Okay, now I always thought my dad was quiet and reserved and stuff like that. Oh, my dad was a big time instigator, big time <laughs> instigator, and would get his sisters in trouble all the time at the dinner table. Oh my God, you did that shit at the dinner table. My dad's house, he was flipping out, man. You know, but, oh, he was an instigator, and they, he, you know, the girls would always get in trouble. You know, my dad was the only son in the in the family, and there was two other two girls. You know, mm -hmm. my two aunts, and yeah, he was always an instigator. And then my grandpa pop told me about. How, you know, because I'm like, you know, dad's just so reserved, so quiet. Then he told me about how my dad and a couple of his buddies went to play a joke on somebody else. So they put the guy's car up on some cinder blocks and took all the tires off of it. And the guy was pissed off. He was pissed off. <laughs> I'm like, 
my dad, my dad did that. <laughs> you know, dad to me was like, he was all straight A. You know, he was, he was, you know, very strict and all that stuff. My dad did that. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was all kind of shit that my dad used to do. He goes, oh, you have no idea. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You know, but. <laughs> Isn't that weird, though? When you find out, what, you're just like, you're actually like blown away. Yeah, because you're like I, my dad was like, oh, you know, my mom and dad would have just killed me. There wouldn't have been, a, you know, uh, I'm making you sit in the corner and I busted your ass. See, they'd have killed me. Exactly. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh. and you know what? The, another thing, and Will's always saying this, and this is so true. When you hear this, you okay? Do you know what <laughs> is? Listen. <laughs> What's that? Uh, what the hell are you doing? What is that? Crying. Crying. You know, oh, okay. after oh, you've had a beating of your life. Or something. I thought it was a porno. No. <laughs> when when you you don't know what it's like to sit there and go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, true, 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 right, yeah. Okay, all right, what, what was after a good ass, I mean a good ass whooping, where you couldn't stop crying? <laughs> or you never had one of those? Uh, no, I didn't. <clears throat> oh, see, so you don't know what that is, okay. Yeah, the one where you I, lay I there. I for my brothers, I witnessed it for my brothers. <laughs> Oh, I know you had to see Gary and Brad sitting there going, hoo, hoo. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, one time when I was little, just one time when I was little. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> now, my dad, you know, every Saturday he'd go to the American Legion and mm-hmm. he was pulling out the driveway. And, you know, I used to stand at the front door and I used to wave to my daddy every time he left to go, to, you know, on Saturday. He used to pull out. <laughs> well, my brother Gary thought it was going to be, he was going to be slick, slick really. And come up there and try to close the door on me, right? You know, pull me away from the door so I couldn't wave to my daddy. And so he goes to pull me away and I start bawling. Oh, my dad hurt that shit. What? <laughs> Brakes went. He went flying in that house, gave him an ass whooping. <laughs> I mean, we're my brother's ass. So I, I do know what that's like because I've witnessed it, but not on me. Right, you know, and I'm like that. And then I walk away like that served you right for trying to take away my daddy like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i remember many a night my mom would say it's okay i can't reach you right now but you got to come home and you got to come in that door sometime <laughs> and i was like no 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 let's not do that let's just beat me now and get it i was the beat me now kid oh, i man. would do what i would do and if i was going to do it it was going to be bad Bad, bad, bad. Like, I ran over my sister Nicole with my bike. <laughs> it was a mistake. I didn't see her there. And to this day, I still feel bad. But, yes, I ran her over with the bike. And she was like, Ooly! And I couldn't stop. And I was coming down a hill. And psh, I ran her over. So, you know, my mom was like, That's it. I'm taking the bike. I'm like, No, just beat me. <laughs> <laughs> just beat me on the bike. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would date. I was like, you know, I was the one. I'd go get the belt and everything. Here you go. Just oh beat me. <laughs> you want me to go get a switch, too? No, no, no. Let's not wait till later. Let's do it right now. <laughs> so it's fresh on my mind, Mom. Oh, no. I was a real smart ass. And I used to say, but, Mom, I may forget later. Oh, she goes, I guarantee you when I hit you, you'll remember. And I was like, no, no, no. Let's do it now so I don't forget. (laughs) Oh, no, no, no. Beat me now, please. Beat me now. I want it right now. Oh, yeah. My mom would just go, you know, finally. I forgot what the hell I did. I don't know. Oh, well, I can't say which sister. We'll just put it this way. My sister comes into the bathroom, and I didn't feel like dealing with her, okay? Because she, you know, I love my sisters very much, but they could be a bit much when they were little. And they were always up under my ass, okay? And, again, I love my sister very much, but I was irritated. And, um, mom had just gone grocery shopping and had bought Preparation H, a brand new tube of it. (laughs) 
Tanya K. Oops, I said it. My sister came. I'll cut that. <laughs> <laughs> she came into the bathroom and I was just getting out of the shower and I was getting ready to go hang out with some of my girlfriends and go have fun. And she's like, I'm itching. And I'm like, go tell mom. So she comes back in and she goes, mom said, <laughs> you need to put cow mine lotion on me. I was like, I'm getting dressed. I'm, you know, got, can't you do it? No, I can't do it. So I looked at her real funny. I said, you really can't read too good, can you? No, why? And I said, oh, well, you see this right here? Yes, I said, for itching and burning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Mom was having a Mary Kay party that day. <laughs> She had like eight girlfriends out there, right? And her one girlfriend, God love her, was uh, one of my good friends, uh, her mom. <laughs> she was from from West Virginia. And girlfriend, just she was a military. She was, she's actually a, a veteran and a sweet, wonderful woman. I mean, at the time, when you're growing up and you're that age, you know, you just, oh, Lord. Tawny comes out and she's like, Mom, I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> and I told her, you got to use a lot of it. <laughs> oh, no. She goes out, and I hear my mom go, what the hell? And uh, mom's <laughs> girlfriend goes, oh, Lord, have mercy. She said, you need to get that child in the... Is that preparation ain't just me? <laughs> and son... Oh, Meanwhile, oh, screw it. Tanya was right. Tanya's like, but mom, it says for itch. <laughs> Where's your sister at? And I'm like, oh, man, I knew it a beating before I go. All right. So anyway, I come out and she's like, God, what is wrong with you? Why can't you ever just do what you're supposed to do? Why are you doing this? She goes, Tawny, go get in the, in the shower. And Tawny's like, okay. And then I kind of felt bad because I'm like, oh, you know, and now I'm like in deep shit. Okay. <laughs> now, my hat, three quarters of mom's tube of preparation. <laughs> just <over> Tawny. <laughs> and, oh my God. So my mom's girlfriend goes, you know, I'll get, I'll take care of that little one. You go on in there, grab that belt and beat the hell out of that one right there. <laughs> so mom goes like this. She said, go gather your records, go get your record. Play. Cause her and dad were starting, came up with this bullshit that they got from one of the counselors. Don't beat her anymore. <laughs> Just gather her stuff up and take it out. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'm like holding the door going, no, mom, please, no, no, just here, beat me. Go ahead, here. You know, I'll go get the wooden spoon. I'll go get the spatula. I'll get a switch. I'll even get, I'll take a beating from all of them. Please don't do that. My mom is like Jacqueline. Why did you do that? And I was like, I don't know. I was in a hurry. I wanted to get to my girlfriend. She goes, now you're not going. I go, what? No, no, no. See, the whole deal was you beat me. I learned my lesson. <laughs> and I go where I'm going. She goes, no, you, you haven't learned anything yet. And no, now you're going to lose everything. And I'm like, shit. <clears throat> so my dad used to, was infamous for, yeah, just leave the dictionary in there and paper and a pencil. And then when she gets smart and says something, tell her to look it up. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. So I was like, yeah, that was like, you know, something that, that would be a typical beating for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Oh, yeah. That was a typical beating for me. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> she was. Oh, my God. I wish you could have seen the look on her face. She turned like three shades of purple. 
<laughs> and she has red hair anyway, so she was redhead with purple face. Oh, my gosh. She was so mad. She's like, I could just, I'm like, kill me, beat me. <laughs> Come on. Let's. She's like, and your sarcasm and God, I can't. One of these days, I'm going to rip that tongue right out of your face. <laughs> well, you know what? And, and you don't realize until you get older that why do teenagers do the things they do sometimes? You know, I don't know. And, you know, to this day, their ass? do you know why you did some of this? Well, you know, I did you it know. to see if I could get by with it. Nah, I don't know why I did half the shit that I did, you know? Like it's just, it's I was just boring. brazen and just do. wanted to do it. You know, everybody was like, well, you know, so-and-so made her do it. And I was like, no, nobody made me do shit. I did it because I felt like it. <laughs> my dad was like, you know, you can't play follow the leader. And meanwhile, my girlfriends are going, but it was her idea. <laughs> <laughs> We no, she wasn't following us. It was her idea. Oh my god! Oh yeah, and you know it's funny because I, I mean I was I was a drama queen. Oh my god, I was a dr a major drama queen. Like when I first got my period, I thought I was dying. Oh my God, Robin! My mom will tell you, she. I was, you know, because I was young when I first got it. I was like eight years old, and I thought I was dying. Seriously, <laughs> I came in and I was sliding down the wall <laughs> with my hand up on my head, and I was like, "Mom, Mom, I love you, Mom." And she's like, "Yes, Jacqueline, I love you. What do you want?" I'm like, and then I crawl across the carpet, and I'm like, Mom, tell my sisters I love them. She's like, Jacqueline, what the hell is wrong with you? And I'm like, Mom, I'm not going to make it through the night, Mom. <laughs> I swear to God. She looks at me, and she goes, what the hell is wrong with you? Stand the hell up. And I'm like, Mom, I'm bleeding to death, Mom. I'm... <laughs> I'm, you don't understand. I'm, I'm bleeding, Mom. And she goes, what, Jacqueline? And Mom's looking at me all over, you know. She's, she's, I don't see any blood. And I'm like, but, Mom. And she goes, oh, my God. Did you fall? I'm like, no. So immediately she takes me to the emergency room. <laughs> we get in there, and I'm like, Dr. Katubik, I'm dying. <laughs> And Dr. Katubik's like, Jacqueline, you need to calm down, Jacqueline. <laughs> and I'm like, but but I'm not going to, Jacqueline, that's not what it is. You have started your cycle. And I'm like, cycle? What's a cycle? <laughs> What's happening? What do you mean? I said, and my mom's out there. <laughs> She's become a woman. And I'm like, what? What? Who has? What's going on? Oh, my God. <laughs> What's well, no, that goes back to remember when I told you about the whole bra thing? Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Teacher made me come. I was five. I had just turned five. And the teacher made me go home that day. They called my mom. <laughs> my dad was like, what? Now, see, I don't get this because I was five years old. And they made me go buy a bra to cover, you know. And now you can walk in there half-dressed. Yeah. In yeah. kindergarten, and it's okay. Of course. Of course. You know, and, and I was just like, I know when I see these kids are going to school and everything, I'm just like blown away. I'm like, well, they've got boobs. Why do I have to go get a bra? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I will never forget that. I'm like, but mom, it itches. No, it hurts. No, I don't want to wear it. No. <laughs> Jacqueline, you got to wear it. And I'm like, but I don't want to. And that's why when you talk about when we come, I used to, it's, I was walking home taking that thing off. <laughs> I hated them then and I hate them now. Yeah. And, you know, who knew they were ever going to get this damn big? I mean, come on. But, you know. <laughs> 
You know, <laughs> in the fourth grade, I kid you not, in the fourth grade, I was a uh, 42C. What? Uh, double in C. fourth grade? In the fourth grade. Jesus. By the time I hit my senior year of high school, I was a 44 double D. And I was not fat. I was thin. I was all boob. Jesus. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I was a I can't jump the hurdles today, coach. Well, that's what I used to tell my teacher all the time, my gym teacher. She goes, you know what? Just do the best you can. <laughs> and there was other ones like me that were big and busty. There was a few other ones. You know what I mean? That we were just like, you know. And I remember in junior high school having to do extra laps. Just to see me bounce. <clears throat> and it wasn't a fee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me tell you something. Oh, and the thing is, is it cracks me up because I think about back when we were in school as opposed to now. You know? Yeah. Yep. I mean, we were talking about the whole glasses thing. When did you notice that your mom was holding shit? You know what I mean? Did you did you notice? I did. I was like, Mom, what's the matter? Why are you squinting your eyes? Here, Jacqueline, hold that. And she, you now walk backwards a little bit. And keep going. Keep going. Up oh, there you go. That's good. Um... Yeah, there's a parent-teacher conference coming. I'm like, really? I could have read that to you. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you know what I mean? And I, it seemed like it was probably, I want to say, probably 10th grade that I noticed that she was having, you know, the whole needing glasses stuff. I don't remember. And then by the time I was coming home from, you know, from school and stuff, when I was going to school in Virginia, you know, she was just like, here, run across, run across the street. I need to read this. <laughs> I gotta know what it says. Oh, my God. Well, it was funny. I remember when I noticed for the first time I needed them. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Little Miss Drama Queen. I was like. What is wrong with my eyes? Why do I have to? And I'd stand back a ways. I'd sit, sit it up and then walk back a little bit. I was like, oh, hey, yeah, I can read that. And I'm halfway down the hallway. I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, the diabetes has my eyes. <laughs> I, get, I get over to the, uh, my eye appointment and I'm like, doc, doc, I'm going blind. Oh, my God, the diabetes got my eyes. Okay, well, Jackie, sit down. Let's take a look. So, you know, you got to go through the whole exam. She numbs your eyes and everything. And, you know, she's, um, she looks, she says, well, the pressure behind your eyes is real good. You, you know, I just think that you're getting, how old are you now? And I'm like, what's that have to do with it? <laughs> she's like, are we approaching 40? I'm like, kind of, yeah. She said, well, that could be what it is. Because I was 37 when I first noticed that I needed, that I was starting to have a little issue there. And then I would use, like, the dollar store glasses. And then finally this year, we went, uh, Will and I went, and we both had to have them. Yeah, I wasn't happy this year because it was the bifocals <coughs> year. You know, that, that kind of freaked me out because... You know, I mean, probably about seven years ago is when I first got glasses. And, you know, and this year when I went and he goes, okay, well, we're going to hook you up with this. I'm going to buy focals. I'm like, buy what? <laughs> and he bought, he goes, buy focals. I'm like, what the shit? You, you mean buy sickle. Buy sickle. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm like, buy focals? What? And he goes, yeah, you know. So I'm like, God dang it. And he goes, well, you know, Robin, you are like, <laughs> so, um, you know, and I was like, <laughs> 58. I mean, no, I didn't say 58. What the shit are you talking about, 58, girl? Uh -uh. <laughs> I was going to say, you can't be more than 49. That's right. Nine, 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 nine. <laughs> Oh my 
God. <laughs> hey, don't forget, because Steve Huber listens to this, so you got to go, Hi, Steve. How are you? Are you enjoying our show tonight, Steve? I couldn't do that now if you paid me. <laughs> Hi, Steve. We love you, and thank you very much for listening. Yes, Steve. We love you, Steve. Thank you. Oh, wait, that sounded like a transvestite. <laughs> Don't do the trans voice. Do the sexy voice. <laughs> yeah, caught, hawk that up and then do the sexy voice. Hey, Steve. Sexy man. I can't freaking do it, Jackie. Are you kidding me? Here, I'll do it for you. Okay, Hi, you. Steve. So, um, you're going to spend You this... must be Jerry. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stephen, you do realize you're going to be spending a couple of hours with me and Robin. <laughs> Just to let you know, I know you love those <clears throat> smokers' voices, so we're just going to let you know that we love you. You want my number? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Steve, thank you, sweetheart. He's going to be like, what'd you do that for? <laughs> Thanks for being on Team Player. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, girl. I think we should call it a night. <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize. It's almost 8 o'clock. It's past your bedtime. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> I get tucked in at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Damn, and you didn't... Wait a minute. Are you in the wine already? No, not yet. I didn't I didn't hit the sauce. As soon as I get in the house, I'm going to be hitting the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well... Again, thank you very much for hanging out with us. Amy. Thank you, thank you. So we've got from... <clears throat> go ahead. Uh, uh, from... from uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> from... from, from, from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> we got Indiana, Florida. And again, this is... Robin, Jackie, and, and Will, <laughs> and we will now be Roj Will Rocks. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. This is Mr. Scooter Dude <laughs> reminding you to try our newest line of products from the company called Douche. Remember, with a brand new handbag that has built-in. Headgun holster. That's right. Hand on the purse. <laughs> ah, safety first. Oh, wait a minute. It's not cocked. I'm sorry. Hand on the purse. Oh. Ah, safety first. <laughs> Again, we're Road J Rocks. Thank you guys for hanging with us. Do you want to end it? Well, hold on real quick. Go ahead. Let me. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to have to borrow the Yes, dear. Go ahead. Are we ready for our sign-off? Yes, we are. We are. This is Robin, Jackie, and DJ Will J. Thank you for stepping into the <laughs> hen house with us this evening for another episode of Road J Rocks with special guest DJ Will J here on HNPK. <laughs> Henpeck Podcast <laughs> Network. Affiliated with the Fine Feathered Friends Network, sponsored by Scooter New Industries, where remember, head of the purse, safety first. <laughs> okay, we're out. <laughs>